Hey guys, and welcome back to Overland NZ. So this was meant to be a install video, but it wasn't actually very interesting. I filmed the whole thing and it was basically just like the back of my head plugging wires in and things like that. So instead, I thought we'd have a look at the TGM Pro Series single compressor thing that I bought versus what I have been using for the last couple of years, which is one of those like generic sort of big single cylinder air compressors from, you know, Super Cheap or Adventure Kings or all of those. So, like, obviously when I set out on this build, the whole plan of it was meant to be fairly basic. Um, but there's a couple of things that I really, really wanted to do with this that I have never done before. So number one is I wanted the onboard water, and number two, I want onboard air. Yeah, you know, cleaning your tires down is one of those things that helps you heaps off-road, and I'm not probably as good at it as I should be, as I get sick of, like, having to pop the bonnet, find the compressor, you know, plug it all in, run around the car, turn it on and off the switch all the time. Like, it's just a pain. So I wanted something with a pressure switch so that I can just basically toggle the air on and off at the wheel. And I wanted something that I could mount in my little electronics bay in the back of the car there. It's out of the way, I don't have to think about it. It's permanently plugged in and basically I have to look on the switch, plug in the hose and off we go. So yeah, let's have a look and um, go from there. And just one disclaimer, I paid for this pub um, and did all the install and paid for everything myself. There's no sponsorship here. I don't have to say anything good or bad about said pump or even make a video on it. I just thought I would because, I don't know, I couldn't find much on them. And if you're looking at pumps, it's hard to know what to buy. So one of the things that kind of irks me about this style of compressor, which is what I have been running, is that it just floats around the boot. Like, I know that they came with a bag. Mine's long destroyed. But they float around the boot. They take up room. And, like, with this car, I, I don't have a heap of room to play with. Like, this boot is big but it's not enormous and like sitting just down there i've got my deep cycle battery i've got the dc to dc charger i've got a water pump and there's a perfect space there for a compressor so i thought let's just do it let's fork out the money and buy something decent so that i basically never have to think about it again sitting over here i've got the outlet can i find a nice way to mount that eventually but for now it does the trick um yeah so you know these like you know these pumps work fine i've had zero issues with it it does sort of get really slow the more and more you pump up i don't know what the duty cycle on one of these is but i'm assuming it's not great and you know i'm not running the biggest tires so i don't need the biggest pump yeah one case i'm gonna get is why didn't i go with the twin basically lack of room i don't really have room in here to run a twin compressor i looked at them you know they are probably double the speed of what i ended up buying but you know just just one of those things and it's more money, I need heavier wiring to get the power back here, and it all just kind of adds up real quick. So the single compressor, it's you know 100% duty cycle, which most of the little ones aren't. That was basically the primary reason I went with the TJM, and it's small, and it fits in that space beautifully, as you guys can see. So yeah, let's, um, I don't know, let's give this a bit of a test. I'm curious to see how it performs next to my super cheap one. You know, the TJM one is an 86, 87 litre per minute pump. This is a, claims anyway, 100 and... 40, 160, 160 liters per minute. So I've been to see, like this thing does work well. I can't deny that. And it probably, I'll be honest, is probably faster than the TGM one that I bought. But unlike the TGM one, I need to basically, you know, stop the car, open the bonnet, connect this up, go to each wheel, turn the switch on and off and on and off to check, you know, is the pressure getting there or not? And it's a faff. So the TGM one, there's a pressure switch on the pump itself. I've just got a gauge, I squeeze it, air comes out, let go. Everything stops once it hits 120 psi in the hose, and I can see how much air is in my tires. So, in theory, the overall experience should be far quicker, but it's only one way to find out. All right, 18 psi. Also, if you wanna know how to use these, a very old, very awkward video that I made um, explaining what to do and how to get the best out of these. I'll chuck a link up in the corner. All right, so that's one minute. Let's see, according to my deflator, just so I'm using like a constant device the whole way through, let's see um, how many PSI's made it into that tire in one minute from the super cheap pump. So we have 32 PSI on that. That's pretty good for a minute. And um, I'm gonna run these at about 38, so need too much more and that'd be full. So I know this probably isn't like the most scientific test in the world, but I, I just thought it's kind of interesting to see over a minute 
how much air would be forced out of that pump. The biggest thing I found with that um, Subcheck one is basically as you get further and further around, it takes longer and longer as the pump warms up. Like it's probably not so bad on a day to, like today where it's quite cold, but it just it just doesn't perform that well over a long period. So I'm gonna do the same again. I'm basically gonna drop the tire down to 18 and I'm gonna hook up the TJM pump and see how much air I can get into it in a minute. And we're pumping. Pump yeah. And there we go. One minute running on that pump. So let's get my tire deflator and see how many PSI's that crammed in. Yeah, not the best way to do this part. <laughs> nice to get uh, even results. So we got 34 about 34 33 psi so believe it or not despite being rated half the speed the tjm pump added an extra psi into this tire over what the ridge rider one did so it does show you like those big ones are good i've got nothing against it at all and it has performed beautifully for the last four years but quality gear does make a difference so i understand that like, for a lot of people having onboard air is not really necessary it's not for me either i'm just really lazy and i guess I can be guilty of not airing down all the time, like it's a hassle to air up, yeah, especially with that pump, you've got to kind of move it all around the car and walk around and hit the buttons and stuff, it's, it makes it more work than I really want to do, you know, for airing up and down all the time. Yeah, something like that one in the boot, it's, what would it be? I think that was about 250 back in the day, the one in the boot's about 600 for the compressor and the air up kit, and like yes it's a lot more money but it means that i've got air there i can run around and plug it in and i don't have to move things around and stuff like that with this car like i've got zero just running air lockers in it it's got a locker in the um, back already you know it's a factory air locker if i ever put one in the front which is unlikely it'll be an air locker so i didn't want to go full bore compressor or anything like that like the single one is absolutely fine for what i need if it takes you know x a couple of minutes to air up now oh well generally you're in pretty cool places and Worst comes to worst, you get, you know, like 32 PSI, like enough to drive on the road, go off to the gas station and do the rest there. So no, I'm pretty impressed with that. Like, given that it's rated kind of at half of what that big Ridge Rider one is, and it means that it's just in the boot permanently and I've got a hose and I can bang, bang, bang. Like, I know, it's, it's awesome. I'd recommend it to anybody who, I guess, has a bit of spare cash. Like, it's, you know, they're not cheap. And I guess just wants ease of use over value. It's not really the right way to put it. Like, I think that the onboard air is good value, but it's a lot more expensive than doing a just a portal one. So I know, I'm pretty happy. I'm very happy actually, and it's going to make my life just that bit easier. And it, just having air also means like I can use the air gun thing to blow like water off the tent and dust off the car and all those other things I've never ever been able to do. So I know I'm stoked, and I'm glad it's fast. I wasn't expecting that. I'm going to give a massive shout out to Denny and the team at Custom Utes. I emailed them on a Thursday night, I think it was, asking for something completely different. By Friday afternoon, we'd settled on this. I paid them on Monday afternoon, and it was at my door Wednesday morning. Top-notch service, guys. Thanks heaps. And I'm um, yeah, thanks heaps for watching. Hopefully that was interesting. Like, I couldn't find too much content on these compressors. You know, they're just one of those things. Um, I'm very happy with it. It's small, fits nicely. It comes with a pressure switch. It comes with all the stuff that you need. And it just works, which, for what I'm trying to achieve with this build, is perfect. Like, so yeah, thanks heaps for watching, and remember to hit that subscribe button, that like button. Um, we've got a bunch of very cool things to come up very soon. I'm quite excited. I know it's been a bit of a lull on the videos. Winter kind of always does that. Um, but big trip coming soon. It's going to be epic, I hope. I can't wait. Like, I'm just absolutely pumped to get on the road and take this car. Got a few more things to do at first, but take this car on its first massive road trip. It's going to be so good. Anyway, catch you next time.